Hello again, everybody. Welcome to CTN Ann Arbor's Game of the Week. I'm Nick Wisniewski. We are here at Skyline High School. We've got women's soccer with the home Skyline Eagles versus the visiting here on River Rats, a rat in and of himself. Kevin Bryant joining me today. Tell me what we're up for well, tonight. Good evening, my friend Nick. Hey, always a rat, never a former rat. <laughs> I watched these River Rats yesterday against Monroe. Coach Hudson didn't even have to bring in his starters. They ended the game a 8-0 shutout, but they're visiting a squad, a Skyline team that's been on the uptick. Uh, they lost one of their players, Madison Marsh, to a bad injury. Let's see if the team can rally around her and bring her a victory on their home field tonight. Crosstown rivals meet tonight in ladies soccer. Stick around. And here we go, everybody. We've got women's soccer here at Ann Arbor Skyline High School. Again, we've got the River Rats, the visiting River Rats, taking on Skyline Pioneers. And it's early possession for the Eagles. Now, Kevin, you said you saw the, uh, uh, the River Rats play yesterday. Is that right? Tell me a little bit about uh, what, we, what you saw and what your takeaways were. Very sound team. Execution-wise, they do a great job of uh, possession the ball, uh, very quickly moving it to a teammate, finding open space with their open space passes to teammates, uh, attacking the net. Huron was able to score both, uh, well, early in both halves, uh, within the first five minutes, finding the back of the net. They put the pressure on Monroe. Monroe wasn't up to the task, but uh, Huron played a lot of different players last night. Very sound match. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you just mentioned it. When you're playing back-to-back -back matches, um, and, again, against a squad that might not be quite up to your level of play, you are going to play some of those, um, you know, you're going to try to play everybody, spread things around, so you've got plenty of fresh legs for your uh, crosstown rivalry matchup here on a Thursday evening. A beautiful Michigan Thursday evening here. And that's this thing that uh, the Eagles, they, they uh, started off the season, like a lot of teams, Nick, missing certain games due to weather. And they've heated up, you know, the, those six wins, a uh, bulk of those wins coming after they've able to, you know, gain some momentum by playing multiple games in a row without all of those games that, uh, you know, get uh, canceled. No, you're right on, and uh, especially we're about a little more than halfway into the season for uh, spring sports, especially girls soccer, and this is the first time these two squads have played. Yeah, they had to cancel the first mm -hmm. game due to weather. But uh, again, tonight not much of an issue. We've got beautiful sun, a little bit of a breeze as per uh, usual for Skyline Athletics. I don't know exactly what it is about uh, this portion of Washtenaw County, but it seems like there's always a breeze cutting through this area. Well, I think it's uh, due to all of those cars going up and down M14. <laughs> that could uh, that could have a little that something to do with it. That is a racetrack <laughs> right around this area, man. <laughs> I mean, that's the uh, the unspoken turf where no cops are around, man. You just you can you can speed up a little. No no place for them to hide. Yeah, it's just the wild west on M14. Until apparently. they see this uh, broadcaster. Right? <laughs> Once again, we've got the home squad Eagles in white moving left to right. You've got your Huron River Rats moving right to left in the dark unis. And Nick, I've actually uh, had the pleasure of watching the Eagles several times this year. Um, 
team, like we were talking about uh, before the broadcast started, uh, they like to play possessions. Actually, uh, Chris Morgan uh, listened to one of his team, uh, team uh, seniors on the team that suggested a uh, new formation. And so very open-minded does Coach Morgan uh, to implementing these new things. Uh, and it's a, a lot more passing and a lot more patience that we'll see from the attack from the Eagles this evening. No, you're, you're right on. Um, Coach Morgan told me much the same. They're running a 5-3-2, okay. which is a, a pretty rare look. But he said the, the thing to look for with his squad, even though they are 5-3-2, five, five defenders back, three midfielders, two attackers, uh, he says he likes to get those outside players to cut up full, uh, full scale to help join the attack. Well, he's missing one of those players, uh, Junior. Uh, I believe that's uh, Madison Marsh, who was injured on uh, the game earlier this week against Celine. Uh, actually uh, strained or, or, or maybe even have a, a tear in one of the uh, ankle ligaments. We'll miss uh, three to four games. Hopefully be back for the districts, though. That's a bummer to see, uh, you know, a young athlete get hurt like that, um, especially, you know, nowadays with this day and age with all the different strength and conditioning things that they, they work so hard on, the nutrition that they work so hard on. Um, so it's, it's tough to see that. Yeah, and for the Eagle fans, uh, uh, Stacy Marsh, her mother, was telling me the fact that it, it came on a play where it was a, a non-call. Oh. And, and, and so that's the double stinger, right? Unfortunate, unfortunate. Yeah, we didn't have a strength and conditioning coach back in high school. How about you guys, a little bit? Uh, it, it, we had a universal set. So it was just like at the old school gyms. <laughs> you, you lift it until it broke. No, no strength and conditioning. No, no. yeah, different, different time, different yeah, era for sure. Right. Uh, you know, and that was actually another thing about um, our conditioning back in, in the high school soccer days. You know, the first couple of weeks of practice in the summer, you know, late July, early August, it was run, 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 run. We'd barely see a soccer ball. Um, but talking to uh, Coach Lee Hudson, uh, of the River Rats, you know, he says they, even all during their endurance drills early on in the season, they never are without a soccer ball. Wow. He said it's really important that, um, that they're always having a ball, in the, you know, not in their hands, uh, at their feet, so that they're making both of those skills work out uh, as, as best as possible. You know, he talked about trying to keep endurance drills as fun as possible as well, which is not always an easy task. I'm sure that's another a psychological move by Coach Hutchinson as well, too, by being a part of that ball. Uh, play the ball. Uh, don't have the ball play you, maybe. No, oh, there we go. Speaking of playing the ball, looked like that was number six there for Skyline. That's uh, Gabby Catola, I believe, coming on the opposite side with a nice low shot. So are they calling that a goal, Nick? Because it looks like it's going to be a kick from the. And apparently that'll be, I think that'll be a no goal. That might have been a, a penalty or an out-of-bounds before that goal happened. Yeah, because we had an indirect kick there from uh, the official had his hand up the entire time. Never heard the whistle on that one, though. <laughs> there we can see Katola coming up with it. And nice maybe, move on the inside maybe there. maybe right here being uh, inside. Yeah, that could have been an offsides on uh, number five. That could have been uh, Allison Steglitz there, a little bit offsides. And that would have made sense with the ball placement on where that, uh, where that free kick went away. But again, I never never heard a whistle on that one. Regardless, still nil-nil as uh, the Eagles continue their attack. And check out that replay again. It was a good uh, reaction by the River Rats off of the rebound. But then we see a goal coming in right there, Nick. No takeaway on that one. Again, just nice play coming up the right side. Uh, you know, number 13 right there, that's uh, Ty Torek right there for the Eagles. Check out a replay of that goal here. Thanks. See, Torek just goes outside, goes right past her defender. Nice plant, nice inside shot there, and just coming inside of the goaltender. Goaltender played that um, played that angle nearly perfect. You know, took away so much of that net, took away 90% of it, but uh, Torek still found a way to scoot that guy in between the net minder and the goal, and now 1 0 Eagles. Yeah, went upstairs with that shot, Nick. Instead of going down on a ground shot, put a little air, went 
perfect arc on it, finding the back of the net. That's an eight foot high uh, goalpost, so it's hard to cover, uh, especially in uh, high school. To get up that high that fast you saw the goalkeeper she was down she was kneeling trying to be in a good defensive stance great shot there uh for the eagles no again she definitely played the angle almost perfectly but again she just uh, scooted that one through that's uh Torx's fifth goal on the season also So speaking of getting on the board f uh, early, we were talking that the Eagles are more of a possession team, Nick, and here they come out with back-to-back -back attacks at the net and the uh, second finding the net for good. Well, I mean, the Eagles have had great – I mean, they've done a great job with the possession. It's been down in their offensive zone, you know, most of the half so far. You know, we got 32-15 left to go here in the first half, and it has been an awful lot of the Eagles. It looks like a uh, equipment check there coming up for, was that Erica Jackson in the I net there? I believe that's Erica Jackson. The senior? Yep, senior Erica Jackson. Jackson uh, splits time a lot with Phoebe Kinch in goal. Uh, Coach Hudson told us both that he just likes to ride the hot hand, for lack of a better term. Well, uh, Erica Jackson was in the net last night and – did not see a ball at all, <laughs> all night long. I uh, hear on Sweeper uh, was coming up at any time the uh, uh, Monroe Trojans cross midfield. That ball was booted right back down on the offensive end for the River Rats. Well, and nothing came in. That's the that's hot hand then, I suppose. <laughs> oh, Corner wow. opportunity there for the Eagles. Don't know how that ball scooched through there. Yeah, we regardless, might Jackson a came up with it. Of that one, Nick. I mean, that that looked close there. You saw the reaction of one of the Eagles, uh, looking as she's pointing directly in, like the the ball found over the over the goal line. Let's see here, right? You see Jackson bounced right through her. Almost elbowed it in though. Ooh, ooh, yeah. That uh, yeah. I was gonna say that uh, that ball might have crossed that line. It sure seemed like it bounced on the line, if nothing else. But Jackson did a nice job of recovering and scooping that ball up, and you know, rightfully drop kicking that guy out of the way. Well, again, it looked like I don't know. Was that Marsh, 14 for the Eagles, uh, coming in, and it looked like her elbow. Uh, it could have been called uh, almost a hand uh, coming in. Yeah, you know, they did oh, actually go 15. in aggressively. You see the elbow pop mm -hmm. out there? Mm -hmm. So maybe just a good no call both ways, and I believe that was uh, Karen Mays yep. on that uh, elbow. Yeah, th I think you're right about the no call play. I think uh, both of those sideline judges and the referee had it, uh, had it called down just about right. And I've got the Rats playing a little possession at midfield there. Good double team on the defense for the Eagles. Well, I mean, any, any, any good coach will tell you that uh, the game's going to be won at midfield. So whether it's, it's ball possession or, or winning confrontations, that's the name of the game. Stopping those attacks, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, Nick, how will the, the new offensive set for the Eagles play out with what Heron deploys? You know, it, that's a good question. That'll, I mean, that will come down to how much the Eagles, I'm sorry, how much the River Rats really do get possession in their offensive end and how much they can attack. Um, you know, if they're, if they're consistently going after it, they're going to find themselves stunted, and those outside sprinters are going to have a harder time to make it upfield with their, with their teammates. Um, but thus far, those, those outside sprinters have been able to come up and push the advantage and keep the advantage up in their own zones. We've already seen a little bit of that. Really a good chess match between the two coaches. Two, yeah, two uh, very, very excellent coaches, two experienced coaches. Uh, again, Coach uh, Morgan, he's been here since the inception of Skyline Soccer. Uh, talking to him earlier this week, I was kind of joking. I said, oh, you're one of those. You know, he says, yeah, there is more, the, more than a few of us, and that's, uh, that's impressive, you know, starting from the, from the ground up and still being able to see your squad and your program continue to be impressive and to continue to build. Um, then Coach Lee Hudson um, actually – from across the pond. He's from uh, Southampton, UK. Southampton. Yes. Read that he was uh, pegged as a, a young uh, attacker uh, at age 12, uh, joined his first club, ended up uh, unfortunately not playing at the professional level, went into the military. 
very extensive career, coached at Milan Girls. Okay. And uh, now also coaches an FC club team here in uh, Southeast Michigan. Yeah, he's part of a, um, I believe it's the, the Liverpool Academy over mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And you can see the style of the River Rats uh, reflects his, um, you know, the English upbringing as far as his soccer knowledge is concerned. Very European style. Oh, for sure. Yeah, very, very possession oriented. You're not going to get a lot of dump and chase uh, as far as that is concerned. You're definitely right about that. You know, he, he's going to, um, you know, work the entire team in a, in a club style type manner. Um, it's, it's not always about just, I mean, obviously they're going to go out and try to win every single game, uh, but he needs his entire program to grow and get better. Again, similar to how uh, a lot of English football clubs are set up. I'm sure that's where those drills mm -hmm. of keeping the ball for so long as opposed to just out there running comes from. For sure, for sure. Let's see another scoop up there by Eric Jackson. Um, in some other matches that I've seen, she, there it is. She likes to throw the ball out rather than take that, uh, that drop kick and try to let her midfielders win it. Again, that's that, uh, that possession feel. Um, we'll see you know, if the Eagles might not start to catch on to that a little bit. Maybe fake like they're playing back and then jump forward, try to jump the gun and uh, try to get something going in transition there. Nice job of switching fields there by the Eagles. Oh, good forecheck. Good forecheck play by that's that Grace Kachanik. Kachanik had, uh, had a hat trick yesterday oh, against no kid. Monroe. So she's, uh, she's all revved up. She's primed, ready to go. First time really for the Rats to be on their offensive attack side. They've been playing defense this entire match. No, yeah, again, the, uh, the Eagles have definitely been pressing that advantage, doing a nice job working the possession around and uh, taking some good shots thus far. You can see back to advantage Eagles there. Great job finding the open player there from uh, number six, Gabby Cotola, once again. A little bit of a dangerous pass there by the Eagles. Very easily could have had somebody step up, snag that one. It could have been off to the races for the River Rats on that one. With the one nil lead, though, you can take it for chances. Yeah, especially, you know, if you're, if you're kind of feeling things at home a little bit. You know, you've got a little bit of a crowd with you. Um, you've got the familiarity of the turf, you know, kind of Momentum. where it's going to bounce. Exactly. Exactly. That's another strong aspect of the Eagles teams are their throw-ins. Um, and that's something that they're missing, of course, with Madison Marsh coming out, saw her play in an AAU or travel team. Uh, and that was her job, every throw-in. Now, she's, was she making a lot of long throw-ins, or was it just about uh, getting the ball towards a foot or leading her player? All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> yeah, because she does a great job. She, she triggers their offense. Okay. Yeah, having somebody uh, with a nice accurate throw in, nice long distance throw in is big. But uh, again, if, if your players, if your fellow teammates, midfielders, attackers aren't moving to open space, it doesn't matter how good you are, it doesn't matter how strong you are, you know, you're just going to be throwing into uh, uh, a contest. And there you go, you're seeing the pressing style of the Eagles come up with that turnover. Yeah, and pressing is definitely the, uh, the best term for what we've seen thus far from Skyline. They've been done a really nice job of putting a lot of pressure on those River Rat defenders. And thus far, the River Rat defenders have had a hard time either sidestepping or punting something up to uh, an open midfielder. You know, but this, this does come a lot on uh, Jackson there in net. It's up to her to lead her team. And you can see that uh, aggressive play right there by number 13, Ty Twork, already our, our goal scorer here this afternoon. Twerk only a freshman. Is that true? That's incredible. Yeah, you gotta you gotta like that. You gotta like somebody that uh, comes in as a ninth grader and is automatically just a, a contributor. Yeah the Eagles it looks like they have three freshmen on their roster on the, the varsity level. Chris Morgan, Rich Kid Richard. Yeah, no kidding. Again, when you can develop uh, talent like that at such an early age and, and really have your hands on that sort of talent for four years, like you can, you're a pretty happy coach in any sport. Exactly. Here we saw in that last play again, uh, the Eagles defense now doing just an excellent job of pushing up and really shortening the field uh, 
a field of play as a whole. Well, they're taking the, the uh, what Huron does well as far as that attack, and it's just taking it off the map tonight uh, by their their gameplay and their strategy here so far. No, and you you call it definitely a chess match. Great uh, great strategy thus far by Coach Morgan, and you know executed nicely thus far by his team. That pass just a little beyond the midfielder there, just a little beyond uh, Kochanik. Here we'll see Olivia Oswald with the inbounds. Great job there by Hutchins. Stand in front of that. Take one. Take one for the team, as they always say. <laughs> it's going to leave a mark, too. Yeah, that might. <laughs> it might. But that's good. You know, you at the end of the day, when you've got those, uh, those marks on you a little bit, you've got those uh, raspberries on your leg, you feel good about yourself. You felt like you played a sport. felt like you played soccer, baseball, this, football, what it might be. Does this feel good? There it is. Yes, there it is. A little uh, inside thigh there. You're going to have to say that to me a, a little bit more time slowly <laughs> for me to let that sink in. Got another inbound pass here, inbound throw. Olivia Oswald seems to be doing the lion's share of that work. Great job there. Quickness by the River Red defense. Here to see the Rats finding a little bit of space. That ball sent just a little, little too much, a little too far beyond wow, look that, at that attacker. Punt. Wow. Well, that was just a, a solid play by the uh, Skyline goaltender, Maddie Sackman. Smart heads up play coming out ahead. You know, no need to use your hands. You can just boot that back down to that shortened field that the Eagles have already put together. And Maggie, uh, of course, was the, the center on the um, volleyball team as well. Oh, yeah. Another important position. Yep. Yeah, you can do another nice job of the River Rat defense, you know, risking life and limb to get in front of that ball. I believe that was uh, Callie Hasty. Mm -hmm. you know, Mitty. Covering a lot of ground, getting back there. You see, nice high-end corner kick right there. Not a lot of bend to it, but it came in at a really nice speed. Uh, tough for the goaltender. Always kind of judge that from that kind of that kind of speed and that height. Not rid not ridiculously hot and high. Not a lot of spin on it. Um, just kind of a line drive coming in. So that would have had to be played off the foot, right? I mean, to get ahead on that, that would have been difficult nah, to redirect. It's not your favorite thing to do, sure. <laughs> but if, if you got that opportunity, I think I think you're going for it. Once again, we see that uh, that that press there for the Eagles, just doing a nice job putting that extra pressure on the River Rat defense. And again, until the Rats Rats can figure out something to do about it, there's no way that the Eagles are going to stop doing this. And you can see right here on this replay. Flying up in there. That's Cami Trico coming in. Yep, exactly. And again, a really nice job by, you know, tandem work by both of those attackers, both of those forwards, to work together, um, sniff that one out, and, and just keep the ball in their possession. Yeah, and Gabby Cotola coming in and cutting off that pass uh, from the defense off of Cami Trico as well. It's a good job. It seems like this style has really caught Heron off guard. Yeah, I think I think you're right about that. Um, between between the pressing, the shortening the field, um, Heron hasn't had this opportunity right here where they could actually uh, take a couple of dribbles and find some open spots. That yeah, was some nice dribbling there by Jaden Smith. We've seen her dribble up and down the basketball court for Indeed. the Riverettes. Indeed. Um, it's 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 awesome to see so many multi-sport athletes. It's great to see, you know, uh, especially coming back from the times when, uh, way back in those ancient times when there wasn't so many opportunities as these kids have nowadays to play maybe travel team, maybe play on a, a squad outside of just playing for your school as well. It's good to see all of the uh, school spirit. Oh, for sure. I mean, and, you know, a lot of people are into, like, specialization, just staying in this type of thing, and, and you know, 
there's something to be said for being multidimensional as a human and an athlete. Yeah, and a lot of college recruiters are looking for not just players that are special in one sport. Sure, you're going to have those players that step out, that are too big to play some certain sports, they're just built for one sport, but they'd like to see it, from what I've heard, uh, a, a kid that's playing in a different sport. Maybe they don't even excel in that sport, but they're staying busy. They're not taxing that same muscle. That goes a long way with fatigue and injury over a long period of time. Yeah, that's a that's a great point about you know taxing those those same muscles and, and wearing those things down. Again, you're building up your entire body if you're playing you know volleyball and soccer or basketball and soccer for sure. You see the rats just sending that one right out of bounds and around the deep sideline. Really nice job of uh, Skyline showing to that ball, uh, you know, marking her defender off, blocking her out essentially, and getting on that, and then that nice little pass back. Yeah, the Rats do a good job of marking their defenders. You don't see a lot of Skyline players after that first goal of having any open space. No, you're you're definitely right. Once again, uh, the the Eagles appear to be doing just just really executing their game plan here, and with 17-15 left to go here in the first half. You know, they've, they should be pretty proud of what they've accomplished thus far. Oh, sure. Chris Morgan has to be happy with the way that his team has executed his strategy. I'm sure what we had on that one possibly, possibly push on the back there from the Skyline players as they're still dropping back into their formation. Rats need everything they can get right now. Nope. Let's take a look and see here. Maybe a shove to the side. Yeah, there it is yeah, right just, there. Just a little bit at the end again. Um, the River Rat player just got a little bit ahead, and then that, that little last second shove is good enough for uh, an indirect opportunity there for the River Rats. And Cammie Tarico again, we've seen her play for mm -hmm. several years on the basketball court as well, too. It's really neat to see players when they're a freshman, mm -hmm. a sophomore. You can really see the progression of their game. Yeah, and, and you know, as announcers, we get to kind of see how they change, how they get better, and, you know, kind of know a little bit about their game. But imagine being coaches down there kind of seeing the same thing. Almost like, uh, you know, putting your player together. You mm -hmm. can work on s different aspects of their skill development over a period of time. A lot of times when you only had three years on the high school level, the kid was buried on the sophomore year on the JV team sure. and didn't get that great coaching that they get on the varsity level for a long period of time, only one year, maybe two years. Oh, yeah, two years max for the most part. I think sure. that, was, that was definitely the, the case for it. I mean, that was traditional thinking, you mm -hmm. know, and, and that's just kind of not the way things are anymore. Here we'll have another inbounds pass by the Rats. Just a short toss in there. I'm not sure the Rats have had a substitution yet. Uh, I think you might be right about that. I've seen several for the Eagles. Well, Coach Hudson is definitely all about if you can't play 80 minutes, you don't need to be out there. Well, it has to be tough on, on this team that played last night to not have any substitutions going in for this first half. Nice job. Quick inbound there. But once again, the Rats having a really hard time playing with any sort of possession. They can't set their offense because of this stingy Eagle defense. Well, Smart I mean, play there. To yeah, get you're, you're right on. Again, you see the, the Eagles right there. There's bunched in threes. And uh, if the Rats don't move in something more than just like a linear line moving up the field, they're going to have a really hard time with this. They need to start looking for triangles. They need to start looking for a possible pass backwards so they can get forward. Maybe a nice give and go. To reset the offense and then hopefully to get more movement is what you're asking? Exactly. Exactly. And then, and right now, you see a wholesale changes. I think there was five uh, for the Eagles. No, I think you're, I think you're right about that. And again, with uh, 14 minutes left here to go in this first half, you know, you can get those players a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a rest up, give them something to drink, and then maybe second half they come back in. Number 14, Megan Marsh. Number 13. And really, maybe since the possession has been so heavily cited for the Eagles. The rats really can't uh, justify any kind of substitution. No, that's They're not getting out and doing all of their sprinting and attacking. 
Whereas the Eagles definitely are. Again, we see those attackers in mm -hmm. constant motion. We see the attackers even, uh, you know, coming up with that forechecking. And then once again, on those five defenders, those two outside sides are shooting up. Those two outside sides are making it into these plays. And you can really see it from our vantage point here, those five pressing right up inside mm -hmm. of the Huron. Oh, look at that pass. Nice play there. Great job taking advantage of that. As you mentioned, just excellent pass, found that one. I believe that was Gabby Catola finding the back of the net for the Eagles. And once again, all of this hard work, all of this pressing really paying off for the Eagles. I think that was Ella Walamuski on the pass, number three yeah. here. Let's see, coming in right, right there, smartly. You saw the goalkeeper really out of position. Yeah, no, as you said, I mean, you had uh, two Riverette defenders rushing in. You had the goaltender rushing in. And uh, get just a, a slick, nice, smooth pass over to a wide open attacker. Can't miss that one when you're about two yards out. She buried it. That's where the communication on to the River Rats has to improve. And that's uh, really, I'm thinking, going to have to lean on the keeper to direct the traffic in front of her, right? Yeah, I think that that's a big part of it. But again, part of the issue right on that was the uh, initial crossing fields from right over to left. Flipped that's it. gonna that's gonna keep a few people out of position. Um, it's gonna get your goaltender's head turned. And then again, we just saw a little discombobulation between those two River Rat defenders and then the goaltender coming out, not really uh, calling out who needs to be where. Possibly some fatigue setting in for the River Rats after the match last night and uh, the pressure that the Eagles have applied so far in this match. No, you definitely definitely a possibility. See Gabby Catola, that's her second goal of the season for Catola. Yeah, that's a strong throw in. Almost made it inside the goal box. <laughs> and we should have a corner kick coming up here for the Eagles. It's Allison Steglitz. I think she's corner taken kick? more than a couple of these uh, these corners. Interested to see if she goes with something a little higher arcing, if they're sticking with those uh, line drive hard hit. Well, this will really come into play with those five attackers flying in. You can see that right there. Great camera angle. Yeah, that one got up a little bit, a little more spin. And again, with the, with the interesting winds going on here. Not as firm as some yeah. of the early corners. Exactly, exactly. You can see the Rats trying to move it forward. But again, you know, we've talked so much about the Rats in their uh, possession game. You know, it seems like their midfielders are just really anxious to kick the ball away just far. They don't seem too interested in dribbling up. They don't seem too interested in, in picking their head up and trying to move towards open space or, or bring a defender up to challenge them. They just seem to try to be kicking it. Well, and it looks like it's easily to be defended by the Eagles in that manner as well too, Nick. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the Eagles have, have completely excelled at first doing this, but we once again yeah, keep seeing this, yeah. the, the forechecking. But also, they've done a great job of sniffing out passing lanes and jumping into those. That might be some scouting on Chris Morgan's part. Could very well be. You're not wrong. Nice little back move. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice opportunity. Excellent wow. job by Gabby Cotola on that one. Yeah, that fake forward and then a little dipsy do back opened up pretty much half the field for her. And she put a nice foot on that, too, just barely over the crossbar. There you see right there, nice cut Great back. Great handles. Excellent work. And quality opportunity, too. She puts that another foot or two to the left. That, uh, that ball is probably in. Good job there by uh, covering as much of the net as possible for Jackson. Yeah, Jackson's been under, I mean, pretty constant pressure here, as constant as you're going to get in a, in a soccer match. And she's, she has performed admirably. You see the rare boot up oh, some to wheels there. Ty Torek on that one. Torek uh, shows good skill, good speed. Yeah, very quick player, Torek. Long shot by Wasilewski on that one. Erica Jackson. Good foot on her as well. But uh, once again, Erica Jackson doing a nice job of staying in front of that, getting hit, knocking it down with both hands, getting possession, and moving forward. You see Wasilewski, nice job with the plant, just textbook form on that kick. And uh, Jackson's ready for it, though. It's right outside the 18 uh, box, 18 uh, 
18 yard line. Yeah, 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 absolutely. yeah strong kick. And the Eagles continue their attack, continue to pour it on here. Relentless, some might say. See Coach Hudson leaning up against the wall back there in the back of our shot here in the gray. <laughs> he's, he's searching. <laughs> he has a notepad out. He's looking, probably trying to uh, maybe change strategy up, Nick, coming into this halftime in about eight minutes. Well, and as you mentioned, I mean, he is very experienced. He's not new to this show or, or soccer as a whole, so he's not worried. He's not panicked. He knows that he's got some plays in mind. He knows the adjustments that he can make with his girls and to keep them in this. They're an explosive scoring team. Look at that play by Jackson. Great, Great play by Jackson. Jackson. Erica Jackson. Uh, no, you're right. They are an ex uh, explosive team. They're also a really young team, you know, uh, inexperienced, whether that's uh, good portions of that or bad portions of that. Here we can see Gabby Catola once again, but nice play with Jackson sliding in. Again, that's, that's what you like in your goaltender. You like somebody that's aggressive and decisive. Yeah, not thinking, reacting right to what she saw in front of her. Good job. Going down and scooping that ball up. And the Eagles attack continues, slowly pushing forward, just inching their way up. That has to create a lot of a mental fatigue for the Rats as well, the, the pressure that these Eagles are constantly applying so far in this match, Nick. No, you're, you're definitely right about that because, again, you, you can hear them down there a little bit. They are talking. They are calling players out. Um, but as my old coach to, uh, would used to tell us, you know, if you don't like what they're doing, go get the ball. You have a chance to do it as well, too. Oh, mm -hmm. nice turn. That ball barely got out. I thought it stayed on, on the line. You got Marsh on the throw in there. Just a little bit over her target's head. See if the rats can get up and get out, but no. Once again, that uh, that midfield four check, that midfield uh, aggressive play steps up, and we'll see what Megan Marsh can do on this one. See, that's that strong throw that I was talking to you about, and finding right to the foot of her teammate. Wow, cool high kick there. There's maybe another opportunity for the rats to. Uh, Toss one in. I wouldn't be surprised if you could see her go back to one of those defenders. Substitution she thought about it there. Smith. Pretty just solid job of receiving that pass by the Rats. But once again, the Eagle, def or Eagle defenders in that regard do a nice job of getting up and uh, just taking the ball from them. Now, number 20, not on our roster, but that's uh, Sierra Smith, the sister of Jaden Smith. Twins. Don't get them confused oh, okay. now. Okay. I guarantee you I would. Nice job waiting for it. Nice job play on that one. Once again, Katola. Well saved by number 23. <laughs> Is not that a replay? Sure. Not, I'm not sure if we can uh, can say her name anymore, but that was just a quality job of waiting for that one, staying on sides, and still almost slipped by. Got it. Got her foot on that now one. In goalie for the River Rats. It shows good speed number there, but EDP great pitch. job on the defense yep. as well. And again, important for Jackson to uh, take control of that situation. And it looked like better communication between her and the defender back there because the defender saw uh, Jackson sliding in. Sometimes that's a cause for injury alert. For sure. But, I mean, again, you know, that, you know, she's down there calling her players off. She's down there telling her where she's going. You know, she's the quarterback. Sent that one. Megan Marsh just a little bit out of bounds. I think she was hoping her player was going to make a little bit of a cut forward on that one. Yeah, I think the player was moving to the left. Pass mm -hmm. goes to the right. Yep. A little little miscommunication will happen here or there. A little dipsy do with the River Rat defenders down there. Not exactly where you want to be playing those kind of games, to be honest. Not along in your own end line down there. Again, so possession is one thing, but... You know, you've, you've got to move that thing forward, especially yeah. as defenders. So what's, what's, what's going to be that, the, the strategy there, Nick, as opposed to having the, the kick uh, by your goalkeeper with the goal kick? Well, you know, if you let your goaltender just boot, then it's up to your midfielders to win some balls. And if you don't have the confidence in them to do that, if they're maybe a little bit shorter, maybe a little less aggressive, a little bit younger, a little, a little more inexperienced, you know, the more experienced player is, uh, is going to be more assertive in gaining all of those. So I think that could be a big part of it. So Coach Hutt 
uh, Hudson is uh, thinking of strategy with the kicks from the goal as well, too, not trying to put his team at a disadvantage. That would be my guess, but again, you know, I'm, I'm never going to try to be inside any coach's head. It's tough enough being in my head. <laughs> a couple people up there with you? Or? <laughs> More than a couple, probably. <laughs> or no one at all, if you ask my wife. <laughs> And here we go, 3.57 left to go in this first half once again. Uh, Skyline Eagles up 2 to nothing thus far over the Crosstown rival here on River Rats. You see another one of those short passes for the defenders. And so again, a dangerous, dangerous play there by the River Rats. Well, again, Jackson has to be on our toes the entire first half. Ball's been right in front of her. And, you know, Jackson can always make herself available to be kind of a, you know, that 11th, you know, player out there. Um, but, again, she doesn't want to get too far out of her net, just especially the way that the Eagles have been ultra-aggressive in, in their, uh, their forecheck and their attacking up front. Very confident playing team, this Eagles squad tonight. Oh, definitely seeing that. That's, that's no doubt. And, again, maybe they are taking a little bit advantage of a young Huron squad. But Huron comes in boasting that 8-1-1 one one record. As well as, uh, but the Eagles uh, have owned the match the last couple of years. Well, and again, you know, the, the Eagle program has been pretty dominant for, for quite some time now. They'll be uh, hosting uh, some postseason games here in this field, so. Oh, excellent. Usually MHSA awards the uh, stronger squads sure. uh, that have better crowds, better venues. And this is a great venue to oh. watch a uh, soccer match. Most definitely. Very cool atmosphere here at Ann Arbor Skyline. Here we see the rare opportunity here for the River Rats punching up. But again, no possession. Couldn't really get there. The Skyline defenders step up and just boot it out of their end. Yeah, the Rats, when they get gain possession, are discombobulated. It seems like it's a surprise that they're on this offensive end. Nice play right there. Nice little give and go action there. Player couldn't quite send her player out up to the corner. Knockdown shot there by the skyline defender. Is that a dive or a knockdown? I'm going to say that's a knockdown. She, she put some body into that. Yeah, I know, but Smith, uh, she knows <laughs> how to take a, a, a charge in basketball. I, yeah, she, she kind of almost sold that one for me. I don't think soccer players dive. I'm pretty sure that's not a thing. Wow. <laughs> Let's take a yeah, look and check it out. Pushing off it there. Ooh. That was an explosion <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> well, you know, okay. I, think, I, think, I think that one was sold, as you mentioned. That corner had a lot of air under it. Unfortunately for the River Rats, no one could come in and take care of business. Great job by the Eagles, though, to jump in and sweep that ball out of their zone. Solid cross field pass to see what uh, the River Rats can do. Now you can see that those players are actually looking for some open space. But now it's important for those Rat players to call for the ball. You know, if you've got two people on you, there's a really good chance that there's somebody near you open. Unfortunately for Smith there, she got hemmed up right on the sideline. Good job by cutting off angles for the Eagles. You see Tork just fighting through those River Rat defenders, one after the other. Would you call that dribbling? Yeah, we'd call it dribbling. Okay. <laughs> you go, nice, uh, nice quick one-timer. Down to Allison Steglitz, into that corner. But just nobody moving towards the net on that one. A lot of River Rats there in the middle, as they should be. Ten. Nine, and we've got nine eight, seconds left to seven, go here in this six, first half. Five, as the clock four, kicks down, three, ticks down, excuse two, me. One. And that should do it that for our first, first half, half of action here on Skyline CTN's Game Eagles of the Week. From Ann Arbor Skyline, it is the Eagles Ladies two. Gentlemen. It is the is River Rats minor, nothing. Stick around. We'll be back after okay. halftime, and we'll have your second half action. We'll be right back. Let's again take this opportunity to welcome our wonderful friends from
Every June, the City of Ann Arbor's Mayor's Office hosts the annual Mayor's Green Fair to celebrate our community's environmental leadership as exhibited by citizens, nonprofits, businesses, and government. Because it's great, there's music, there's good food, and there's a lot of great information. Located in Ann Arbor's downtown, the Green Fair is open to the public and will feature displays of environmental information, green products, live music, and general enjoyment of the downtown environment. Exhibits will provide information and host hands-on activities for all ages. And it's really important because the river is only as healthy as the lands that drain to it. Exhibitors will show off innovative energy-saving designs and actions, including displays of alternative fuel vehicles, green building materials, solar energy installations, renewable energy installations, and more. For more information, visit a2gov.org slash greenfair. And welcome back, everybody, to CTN's Game of the Week. We've got women's soccer action here at Ann Arbor Skyline High School with the visiting River Rats already down 2-0, Kevin. Ty Torek and uh, Catalo were the two goal scorers for the Eagles. Uh, you know, what else happened in that first half, and what are we looking for here in the second half? Well, just a lot of Eagles flying all over the field, really, Nick. I mean, seeing that they really executed the game plan of Chris Morgan to a T. Uh, possessing the ball and taking advantage of the opportunities and really applying a lot of pressure on the River Rats. River Rats unable to set their offensive attack and they took they were taken out of their game plan by the Eagles strategy. Yeah, I think I think you the word that you hit is absolutely true is pressure. You know, they, they pressured that River Rat defense, you know, unrelenting. And uh, again they had a couple of goals to go their way. And we'll probably see a little bit more of that. We'll see what the River Rats can do to adjust a little bit. You wonder if they might uh, switch up their configuration somewhat. But uh, again, right now, right here, you see Jackson trying to get a ball away from two of those uh, pressing skyline defenders. I would think Coach Hudson would apply a different type of set and formation for this second half because no attacks uh, could really, they couldn't mount any type of attacks at the net of the Eagles. Yeah, we saw a uh, more traditional 4-3-3 from the River Rats in that first half. I'm curious if they might try to bring another defender back, maybe have a, a you know more of a 5-2-3 or a 5-3-2 to try to give another midfielder to give one more look for that open space to try to make one more pass where they're you know being attacked by those uh, skyline forwards. And outside of the formation sets for the River Rats, they're really going to have to step up their game as far as the aggressive play. Uh, sitting back on their heels is not the style that Coach Hudson wants out of the River Rats in this match, again, against a crosstown rival. Yeah, you know, again, uh, the, the aggressive play by the Eagles, they need to play uh, a little more decisive on the River Rat end. You know, they need, to, uh, they need to win those balls. They need to turn and find a player and not just kind of boot the ball away into open space like they just did there. Found a nice uh, uh, midfielder there, Victoria Hutchings there, received that one. But can't count on that one, especially the way that the Eagles right there, just there, are just so aggressive with going towards that ball, well, that swarming on that ball. Well, that was sloppy play there out of the River Rats, unable to clear the ball out of their own end. You see, nice, oh, well played, well defended there by the River Rats. Oh, nice long bendy, bendy left footer on that one. Who did we have on that one? Was that uh, Brooke Robinson, I believe, stepping up. Hopefully we can take another look at that Absolutely. Shot. There you go. Planted perfectly. Just punted it. Just bent Inches right in there. Away. Oh, wow. right Inches off away. that corner. Right off that corner. I don't think that Erica Jackson was quite ready for exactly what that ball was doing. Now Brooke Robinson, the 5'5 junior defender. Great. Strong kick, too. Oh, I mean, again, just really textbook. She even slipped a little bit on that one, but just punched it in exactly where it needed to be. Great heads up play. And I, I think that that might be, you know, what you'll continue to see from the Eagles just peppering shots towards the net. 
Nice centered play there. Tried a, a little dipsy do through the leg play. A little smile out of the attacker's face. Uh, the Eagles are enjoying this match so far. Oh, and you're up 2 nothing, and you're playing 90% of the game in your zone. You're having a good time. Well played. Well, well played forward <laughs> momentum there on that one. There you can see that wide cross pass. Nice little, nice little job finding the what open player that? there. Yep. Tried to go a little behind the back, a little behind the foot. Uh, do whatever you can to try to get any ball on that. You never know. You never know what bounce it might take. Angie Knight on that uh, backward shot. You can see the, the River Rats, the spacing uh, isn't, uh, is what I saw last night when we watched them against the Monroe team. They're bunched up. They're not uh, moving to open field areas, Nick. And it just seems like uh, they're just not in the game plan mentally. No, you're, you're right on it, about the bunching especially. I mean, again, that's a big, big field down there. Your, your midfielders, your attackers, they need to find green. They need to find space. They need to get away from the other team, and they need to just find an open spot. And then they need to tell their teammates that's where they are. You know, communication is so important. Once again, another great opportunity there by Gabby Katola. She's had just opportunity after opportunity. She's really doing a great job of making her own opportunities. She's been really great with the ball, really nice job with uh, some short cuts here and there. She's doing a great job of keeping the ball close to her. You know, well, a lot of players kick that far. Look defender exactly. around and uh, just a good job of really dribbling around that defender and unleashing a, a strong uh, shot on net. Yeah, has that ball on a string, it feels like. You can see once again that uh, Eagle defense collapsing. I believe that's uh, Mina Tremonti on that, kind of finding a way and then switching fields up. But once again, there is the Eagles doing a nice job of jumping in and right into those passing lanes. Yeah, and again, it's the turnovers that the uh, River Rats are going to have to cut down on uh, if they're going to uh, get the ball inside their offensive attack, Nick. No, and again, you know, big props to the Eagles for doing such a nice job of seeing these passes coming. It seems like every single Eagle player, defender, midfielder, even attackers, see where this ball is about to go or they can, they can uh, just know what the Rats are about to do, and they're just getting right in front of them and taking advantage of these passes. So would you say that the River Rat offensive players, they, they have to do a better job of, of blocking or, or at least positioning themselves on uh, the reception of the passes? Or uh, how can they help out the person that's trying to get the ball to them? they got to talk. That's first and foremost. You need, to, you need to find some open space, like right there, and then they need to tell their teammates, this is where I am, this is where we're going. Um, but again, you know, traditional high school soccer, you know, you're, you're supposed to move in triangles. You got the ball, and then you got two players, whether it's behind, one in front, right next, and then one behind. Um, you know, moving in triangles is really, really important. So knowing that that's the thing that's going to happen, you know, as a, somebody that has the ball, you know where it can go. But no, again, it, to me, it really starts with the River Rat defense. They're not finding their midfielders. Or they send it over the attacker's head, something like that. Once again, the Skyline defenders just take the ball right away from the River Rat attackers. And again, the, the, the Eagles, with those five defenders, obviously have the numbers on just a, a small handful of River Rat attackers. Yeah, and you can see right here on this replay, two, uh, two defenders coming in. And, and really, here's another defender coming in and finishing off that play. And we can see a nice little tap in. Oh, outstanding. Heads up play, I believe that's Gabby Catola once again from the outside. Erica Jackson came in to, or came, excuse me, came out to play that, and Catola could s just see what Jackson was doing, and just a nice little tip tap through. All started from the midfield play, long pass. Again, you don't see that a whole lot from this game on either squad, but Catola chases that one down. Jackson a little indecisive on what she's supposed to be doing, and Catola from the very deep corner oh, of the goal box. Yeah, the uh, I'm sorry, from the penalty box out there. Um, just uh, scooches one right by Jackson. You're right as far as Jackson coming out of the net there. Uh, that That's one where maybe the communication would have been a little bit more sound with uh, allowing her defender to know to cut off the angle as she protected the net. Well, Jackson took off at a sprint, and then about halfway you could see her just, yeah, a little head fake there, a little indecisiveness, and that's all it takes. That's all it took. Again, Katola sniffed that out, 
and just put a you know kind of put a prayer on net, but it was spot on. And Cantola has been knocking on the door the last couple times upfield, and you could see that uh, she was sniffing out that back of the net. For sure. And again, the, the Eagles aren't big on dump and chase, but Cantola went there. And again, Jackson went for that slide. She's been pretty successful, but again, I think she was just a half step too slow because of a little indecision earlier on there. It was an easy handball there. Yeah, the, uh, the, the play there for Jackson, if she's going to be watching this and going back and forth, is go with your first thought. Mm -hmm. Your first thought was to attack that ball. Go with it. No, you're, you're definitely right. Again, uh, indecision isn't something you want in any athlete, but definitely not your goalkeeper. No one behind you. Yep, yep. There you see that chase one and last time see, from Catola. And you can see even the angle. Mm -hmm. She misplayed the angle, overran it, and was trying to come into a tackle, and her body was well out of position. But also another problem was that there were no River Rat defenders back there either. Yeah, you saw no one really rushing back to protect the net. No, and, and again, it, it was a longer pass than we've seen um, from these Eagles from oh. either squad, but still, you, you've got to have a defender back there. Nice play working the ball up there, up the sideline for the River Rats. And now we're starting to see a little bit of smart, you know, pick and pop shots here. You see Tremonte once again working along, defended tightly by Gina Devoren. Not a lot of movement there from the other attackers, though. Not anyone going towards the net. And it seemed like Tremonte was kicking the ball towards the net to say, hey, guys, uh, or hey, where, where you at? I'm out here. Yeah, Tremonte made a couple of nice moves there, and then she was just on an island. Nothing happening. And the Rats need something positive for them to, to really get, start feeling good about themselves in this match if they're to get back into it. And, you know, I mean, again, for the most part, that was a nice little series of them working the ball up, uh, finding some open spaces, nice, crisp, clean passes, nice, crisp, crisp, clean receptions of those passes. So that's a start. But, again, you'd like to build on that and stay down there a little bit longer. Very short-lived. Yeah, <laughs> Yes, for sure. And there, once again, the Rats just decide to clear the ball out. have a skyline pass from the top end. As you can see, most of our field is covered in shadow at this point. 29 and a half minutes left to go here in the second half. Sun's getting awfully low. The Michigan spring sun is getting awfully, awfully low. I have a great view here, though, with the tree line in the back, the sun coming over. Surely do, and, surely I mean, do. This is a beautiful venue. And quality work by a camera operator set up in the exact right position, getting some of these golden hour colors down there on the field. Just beautiful. Well earned after the start of our spring sports oh, season man. as well. Yeah, just just brutal for for athletes and camera operators alike. Yeah, those announcers get to sit up in the press box. That's yeah, nice. It's convenient. Yippee. And here we see Jackson going to position that one middle way. Interested to see where she's going to go on this once again. More towards a, uh, a horizontal end line pass there. Yeah, and I think the Eagles have sniffed this uh, re uh, restart. They, they've sniffed it out, Nick. And each time, the Rats can't uh, matriculate the ball upfield more than 10, 15 yards before it's turned over. Yeah, you got to be wondering if it's about time for her to just give that one the boot and see if uh, her midfielders or attackers can just go up and win one of those deep balls and see how it goes from there because this uh, – this idea, this concept, just really doesn't seem to be working. Well, def definition of insanity. <laughs> Same thing over and over again, expecting different results. That's not a bad punt. No, solid punt. Good, good distance off it. Nice header to uh, move the ball forward. Again, not to anyone in particular. Um, but as a midfielder, your job is to progress things, and hopefully you got some attackers with some speed up there that either go and win the ball or find a way to get it and then make a couple of moves. Yeah, you got to catch, pass, catch, mm -hmm. pass, and move the ball upfield. And that's just what the, the Eagles, they, they, they get possession of the ball and they, they're immediately so pressing Eagles. the action back two, up into Maria their zone. Wiseman. Oh, you're definitely Number right three, about that. Ella Wazlewski. Number 10, Cammy Torrico. You see those Eagles working it again, working quickly upfield. Nice pass oh, through, pa nice pass through the defenders. Just a little bit. Mm. Need, I think she might have been offside. She just needed a little bit more mustard on that one to uh, actually break through those defenders. You see the linesman, I mean, maybe a yard offsides. Mm. Very good open space pass. 
you know, you you wait on your player to make that pass so that you can make that break forward, and sometimes you just don't quite uh, quite nail it the way you need it to. We can see here. Let's see where the official. E oh my yeah, goodness! Yeah. Oh was, my that goodness! Was, that was Nick. close, maybe. That was close, maybe. Not a lot of complaining from the Skyline players, though, despite that call that, you know, could have been missed a little bit. No, nah, not a 3-0. Three, uh, three no, yeah, yeah, that's true, you're, too. You're, 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 hey, let's just keep the clock moving. Yeah, you know, you're, you're definitely right. The clock does continue to move down to 26-39 here to go. Left to play in the game. And it's been all Eagles. And this is the time of the season that Coach Morgan loves to see his team peaking, I bet. Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, a lot of times uh, squads like Coach Morgan and Coach Hudson, what they'll do is they'll set up really difficult matchups early on in the season uh, with the idea that you're going to learn from those matchups and then be able to uh, implement those lessons on lesser squads. And uh, I think we saw a little bit of that, again, with uh, Skyline's record at 6-4-1 and one currently. Nice pass through the River Rat defender. And we've got Charlotte Steglitz working up side to side to slow down and wait for her teammates to come and help her out. Steglitz relentless, though. Nice job finding that back defender, that back midfielder, that open player. And that's what, uh, that's what Skyland's going to do is just probably move things around a little bit here. And they're very proficient at possession of the ball. And again, so I mean... This, oh, is, this is exactly in their wheelhouse. Go right in. You know exactly what you were about to say. That they've done a great job of finding that open space. And then, again, players hitting those players finding that open space. And if you're Skyline, you don't want to change your strategy up this time of the match. You want to continue to apply pressure. But you are going to work the clock probably a little bit more diligently than you were in the first half. No, you're definitely right. But again, you don't want to let your foot off the gas either. You know, if this is what's been working, this is how we've gotten ahead, this is how we've kept all this time in possession, you're going to be doing much the same thing. And again, with a 3-0 with a lead, you might just see Coach Morgan throw in some of, his, um, some of his players that don't get to see quite as much action right now. Well, again, I'll go back to a comment we made in the first half, Nick, and that was that the uh, River Rats have not subbed that much in nope. this match nope. after playing a, um, not a full match yesterday. The game was stopped with 20 minutes uh, remaining, but uh, definitely a lot more pepper in the legs for the Eagles uh, than for the, uh, the River Rats. No, it sure seems that way. Again, just very aggressive, decisive play for the Eagles thus far. A little pop-up opportunity right there for the Eagles. Nice long, high punt. Won by the Rats uh, initially, but again, no possession with that. You can see on this replay a little, little pushing and shoving going on there from the River Rats. Yeah, you're down 3 nothing. you're a little frustrated. Again, especially those Rat defenders. You know, they're, they've been working hard this entire game and not a whole lot to show for it. And yeah, we are seeing a little little chippiness right there again as well. And so far we hadn't had any, not a lot of free kicks in this match. Right. Not a lot of penalties in this match. And a, a nice, cleanly played contest so far. No cards of any sort. No, no. And, uh, you know, again, both of these squads are, um, well, I mean, the River Rats are a little inexperienced, but they're doing a nice job of playing professionally, playing intelligently out there, uh, despite being frustrated. I'm sure that they are being down 3-0. Rats once again <laughs> trying to work their way up, but to no avail. Another throw in here for the Eagles. Well, that's a, a small victory for them as far as moving the ball upfield, though. And now maybe they can set their offense. They haven't been able to this entire match because of Skyline. Charlotte Steglitz with a nice reception on that one. Again, just kind of instead of pushing forward against uh, a couple of defenders, wisely pulls back a little bit. Uh, offsides there, though, on the wide attacker there for the Eagles. Can't get a look at who that is. You see Steglitz, again, smartly goes and finds some space, turns and punches it right up, but she is way, way offside. It's Ella Wazilewski. Well, well offsides on that play. Look at the 
pressing is still going on for the Eagles. If it ain't broke, it's, don't fix it. It's it's smartly uh, the way that they are attacking and executing the game plan for Chris Morgan. No, and I think you know I definitely think that Coach Morgan has found a little bit of a chink in the armor of the River Rats here, and he's going to exploit it. And uh, Coach Hudson either needs to find a way to fix this or make sure Coach Morgan doesn't talk to anybody else in the district because otherwise you're gonna, they're going to see a lot of this type of play. There we go. Another send pass over into the corner there. Marilyn Wiseman sends it right into the center. I believe that's Wasilewski there in the middle. Nice play coming back, though. Again, it isn't, doesn't always have to be forward, forward, forward. This isn't foosball. This is a three-dimensional game. No, you want that angle. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, you can almost deke the defense by where your eyes are, but take that foot and move the ball in another direction, you're hopefully going to catch them out of position. For sure. And, they, you know, again, just always pressing forward, always pressing forward, always pressing forward. That's not how this game is played. That's not how it's played intelligently. If you can pass back, like you said, you can find a better angle. If you can pass back, you can maybe get a give-and-go action going on. Um, it's not just about forward, forward, forward. Is that a wall pass? You can call it that. Okay. Yeah. You see the rat defender try to put a foot into it, but once again, quick job by the eagle attackers getting right in the face of that one. Here we'll see what Erica Jackson will do on this one. Nice job finding that mid midfield player right there, but again, just kind of let it through. And then once again, that contested job by the eagles. Well, at least Jackson uh, looked over the field before she triggered that uh, start. And as opposed to going in the exact same direction, mm -hmm. they tried something different. Well, and I think she would have liked that midfielder to actually receive the pass and then turn and go with it. She had some time and she had some space, uh, but she decided to just kind of like put a little toe on it towards her attacker who was completely covered. Well, they, that, that uh, for the River Rats, they just haven't been familiar with having the ball on the foot and possessing it. And you get antsy. No, you're right. You're right. I, I think it, I think that is a big part of it. Is you know you've got the ball. You you still think that you can make something out of this game, mm -hmm. and you're trying to do a little bit too much. And yeah, like you said, nerves definitely part of it. You see Maddie Sackman once again, as you mentioned, uh, volleyball player by trade. This is her first year playing in goal. That's, that's a tough position to start as a senior, right? It surely I'm is. I'm going to take this on, Coach. It surely is. Uh, again, according to uh, Coach Morgan, as the story Junior, goes, yeah, as, uh, as he told me, she came out, she wanted to play, she wanted to kind of expand her, her horizons a little bit in sports, but, quote, she didn't want to run. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they threw her in there. And well, things have worked out. Well, and, and too, it fits what her style set or skill set is as far as being a volleyball setter. Yep. You know, playing in the center, uh, finding teammates, communicating to teammates, exactly. Like you said, the quarterback out yep. there directing the traffic. And obviously good hands. Soft hands. See the Rats once again struggling with the possession, trying to find open players or even, you know, a way to turn and go upfield with the ball themselves. You know, they, it seems like for the most part they don't have more than a yard, a yard and a half before they've got not just one but two Eagles right in their face. And Chris Morgan has to be ecstatic with the execution of his game plan. Oh, I don't think, I don't think he'd be any happier. Again, still 18 minutes left to play in this half, but he's got to really enjoy what's been going on. Not a lot of mistakes out of his team. Uh, you know, they've found players, but I like the way that they've applied their uh, the, the game plan and haven't let loose as far as keeping the pressure on the River Rats from, really, from this opening kickoff. From the get-go, and again, not, not letting up anytime soon. Why would you? You see the nice little pass back by the Eagles, but defended well by the River Rats. Almost a little give-and-go action. The wall pass, as you mentioned. But again, the Eagles have no qualms about passing backwards. And Offside they, call on uh, that one. They, the Eagles look, and they get the, they're giving you that feel, Nick, uh, that they're more comfortable. <laughs> Not just being up 3-0, but they, they just feel more comfortable with where their other teammates are at on the field. Yeah. And that's that experience you've been talking about all evening. Last one out of bounds on the Rats. I believe we're seeing another... 
pretty healthy substitution here for the Eagles. Three or four players on and off. You can see uh, Coach Morgan there in the Eagles hoodie back there. Looks like he was uh, speaking. I, I want to say that was Gabby Catola, maybe. Very well could have been, given her oh, uh, actually, some Katola's instruction. Right there. Yeah, but Both players come away with a little dinged up on that play there. Yeah, goaltender's going to get that. You see that uh, pass right into the middle. Couldn't quite receive that the way she wanted to there. But yeah, she might have got, uh, got a boot to the old rib cage there. Yeah, it's Brooks Robinson on the attack. Again, just another kind of punt right into the middle of nobody. You were going to say it. I was thinking the same thing, Nick. I mean, and you don't see a lot of reaction out of the River Rats. No. Just standing and watching. Yeah, nice job cut inside. Probably the only the second 25. real quality opportunity we've seen from the Rats uh, this half. Maybe this game right there. And, and, and not really having an opportunity to balance yourself and take a quality shot. Uh, that's uh, the, the Rats... Uh, been their M.O. tonight. It's just been out of position and, and not really settled into this match. Yet, despite getting that opportunity, it was really under duress. There you can see. Nice little chip over. And again, probably not exactly the footing that the rat attacker would have liked to have had there. It's a good idea, though. Mm -hmm. Sackman's coming across the net. Maybe make her run a little bit further. I'd like to see some air under that shot. Maybe a volley shot as opposed to a ground shot. Uh, and again, I saw the player come in. I'm not sure if she's possibly not even left-footed. Could have been part of the issue there. You know, it's just a matter of getting anything on it at well, this as point. Well, as an attacker, you hope they're good with both yeah, feet. Yeah, true. true story. Here we do seem to see the makings of a little bit of an offensive attack here by the Rats. You could hear Jackson from the other end yelling, let's make it count. Smith, I believe, on the, uh, that's the one we're saying isn't on the roster. Right, I think you're right. Oh, that's a good job by Sackman. Goal and that's that's what you want from your goaltender. That's what a goaltender is supposed to do. She called it right from the get-go, went up, had two hands on it. Decisive. Yep, exactly. No, no, no doubt in any player's mind who was going to get that. Mm -hmm. Nice punt almost to the midfield, Mark. One pretty cleanly there by the Eagles. Nice pass up ahead into the corner for the River Red attacker. Just a little bit offside was Ty Twork on that one. And Twork just came back into the game. That's who Chris Morgan was talking to at the, uh, that last substitution. And you can see Catalo set that up, sent it. Oh, Twork, I think she thought that that defender to her back was even with her, but she was just about a half behind a quarter her. step. Mm -hmm. Quarter step behind her. Substitution in for the Eagles, number 14, Megan Marsh. You see Twork right there. Trying to find her way up the left side of the pitch. Couldn't quite catch up to that one, though. Good job of pressing the action. You see Brooke Robinson here on the throw. Yeah, we'll try to redo that one again. Wasting no time, Robinson, on that throw in. Yeah, the Eagles have been a step ahead, Nick, all night. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I think a big part of their game plan is, you know, their quickness and trying to do things as quickly as possible. As the, the River Reds seem to be, you know, looking at the play, the Eagles seem to be reacting right yeah. away. Yep, absolutely. Let's see Sackman put a boot on this one. Continuing opportunities here for the Rats on their half of the field. Great job by that Rat defender to step up and win that one, get an aggressive play, and then find some space and try to find somebody making a move up front. The Eagle defense, though, is everywhere. They're, sure. They're just not allowing the, the Rats to, 
look up when they're dribbling to see any type of openings and and the rats have to move a little bit more as well too nick and a quick substitution here for the rats Waiting along that side corner line for a throw in here momentarily. Here we go. And again, you know, that, that ball moved into a player, but, you know, that player is completely surrounded so by Eagle defenders. Number one, On either side. Mm -hmm. Number 14, it's almost like Jackie they're playing with an extra player, it seems like, out there. On I, the I bet that's what the Rats feel like right I now. Bet. They, they might be out there counting. And look at that. I mean, they... Uh, the Eagles have done an outstanding job of swarming, mm -hmm. but not putting themselves out of position, and that's that's very good coaching. I mean, it's good coaching, and what that really is also is, is great endurance. You know, to make those aggressive plays and then go and find open space on the other end in transition as quickly as possible. You know, you got to have strong legs for that. You got to have uh, legs that are going to stay at it. And you can see the fact that uh, those substitutions by Coach Morgan are adding up now here later in the match where his players are fresh, are a step ahead of the Rats. Yeah, that's, that's huge. And, but again, I mean, those girls have earned these little breathers that they've uh, been able to take. Because again, they've been, they've been going, 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 sprinting uh, full speed up and down this field. And again, sprinting towards the ball, whether it's defensively or offensively. Good header there by Catola, I believe, to uh, move the ball upfield. Yeah, Catola's definitely a table setter out there for the Eagles. She's really done a great job of making some plays. She's a uh, uh, great job ball handling down there, and uh, she's taking her opportunities here on this one, put two in the net, but just a great player up front to have. Seems to see the field really, really well. And that's a skill set that a lot of players uh, or a lot of teams don't have. Uh, a multi-talented player, mm -hmm. but somebody that likes to score. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have teams, I, I, I saw a Novi game earlier this week where they didn't have a standout score. Mm -hmm. Great possession, good passing, sound formations, but they just didn't have anyone to find the back of the net, and that goes a long way. Well, it seems easy enough to, to kick that ball in that giant net, but uh, not easy. Again, you need to have a little bit of power, and you really need awareness of where you're at and where the ball's going to be. Yeah, looks looks easy. Clearly is not by, you know, most soccer scores that you'll see at the end of the day. An aggressive, I, I would say, mindset. Sure. You know, not, not setting back, allowing, uh, you know, to be happy with what you got. Mm. I want more. I want more. And that's what we've seen out of Katola. Uh, she's pressed several times and gone right at her attack, mm. right at the net. There you go. Nice deep in pass there. Scooped up by Jackson. I think, it, once again, going towards that, that deeper ball. But again, that, that aggressive job by the Eagles winning those long balls. Well played there by number 16 for the Eagles, keeping the ball away from two different rat defenders, just waiting for her teammates to finally open up. Good job, deep ball there by the Rat defender. And great communication uh, from uh, the keeper as well. And yeah, you know, again, just from the Rats, you're not seeing the crisp passes that you'd like to see. You know, it's, it's, it's not easy to receive a pass that's bouncing or receive a pass that's about knee high. There's typically not a whole heck of a lot you can do. You know, you've got to put that ball right on your teammate's boot. Or send them in a way where they can get to it and it's low. Yeah, and with a, a team that doesn't have a, a lot of uh, long experience as the Rats right now, you don't have anyone that's stepping up as a leader trying to rally the troops out on the field. You have Coach Hudson on the sideline, of course, but you'd love to have someone out that's going to snap your teammates' uh, alertness and, and wake everyone up because everyone seems to be going a step slower for the River Rats tonight. No, you're, you're spot on about that. The, the Rats only have five seniors, and uh, outside of... Number eight, uh, uh, Jackson back there. You know, I don't think we've called maybe one of their names all night. So again, they they are a young team. They are an inexperienced team. Um, 
you know, as they get older, they will become more decisive. They probably will become more aggressive on top of the, all the other uh, soccer skills that they'll be picking up and working on in the coming years. Especially under the tutelage of uh, Coach Hudson. Absolutely. You see a long ball opportunity here for the Rats. Who wants it more on this one? But just inches out of bounds. I think Coach Hudson's squad will come away, though, Nick, with an appreciation of different strategies. No, I think, you're, I think you're absolutely right about that. Again, this might be the first time they've seen a look like what the Eagles are doing, and now they know how to recognize it. And, again, hopefully the, it's the, the onus is on Coach Hudson is to teach these girls how to beat it. It's night and day from 24 hours ago where <laughs> they scored eight goals, uh, ended the match early. And this one, uh, probably just a handful of shots on right, that. Right, very few even opportunities. Again, uh, Maddie Sackman, the uh, uh, goalkeeper down there for the Eagles, barely tested. Unlike Jackson. Jackson, we, we can't she's say her name uniform. enough. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> she's been all over the place for the Rats. Yeah, she'll get a good night's sleep tonight, that's for sure. Trying for the quick inbounds play on that far side the Rats were. But once again, just threw it right into the middle of three Eagles. Easily headed away. A little crooked throw in there, but that's okay. Yeah, it was awkward. Change your mind halfway through. There's no box in soccer, so you can do that. That one went in off the outside of the corner flag. So we'll have another throw in here by the Eagles. And the Rats, they, they just don't seem interested now once they've had this ball down on their end as far as maybe spreading out the action, maybe trying to open up some angles. I, I think you said it right earlier, Kevin. I think at this point they just kind of don't know what to do with it. You know, they're, they're, just, they're just so out of place and, and out of sorts. You know, when they do get opportunities down there, they're just not sure, wide-eyed. Again, you, you can definitely see that with the fact that, you know, they're not making crisp passes. They're not finding anybody else. It really does seem to be a dump-and-chase situation for the Rats. There's a good turn over there for the Rats stepping up. Right, kind of take, uh, take some of the Eagles, give them some of their own medicine there. That's Catherine Kim stepping into the play. Sackman eats that one up. And dribble a little bit, a couple of bounces, take a little time off the clock. Wish she had six seconds. Uh, you know, th I think they say six, but, I mean, nobody's counting. It's, like, it's like a traveling I've never basketball. seen anyone call called for holding that ball longer than six no. seconds. No, if, if, you Unless know, they want to. And it used to be back in the day the goalkeeper was only allowed three strides once mm -hmm. they caught it, and I, that's probably out the window at this point anymore, too. And as things continue to wind down here at Ann Arbor Skyline, we've got 351 left to go. Just a, a commanding, dominant, well-executed performance by the Skyline Eagles here tonight. Really from beginning opening kickoff, Nick, I mean, you know, a goal scored in the 13th uh, Katola. Uh, actually, it was Torque. Torque uh, with that first goal. That yep. first goal. Uh, just seven minutes into the match. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that, that it's been the same type of style uh, all evening for the uh, Eagles. A lot of pressure, a lot of possession, and uh, just execution has been more sound than for the River Rats. No, you're spot on. And, uh, again, you know, they, they had that plan, and the execution has been there right from the get-go. And, you know, they've, they've got a real game to hang their hat on here with this one. Um, again, as, as the record might not be where they want it to be right now, 6-4-1 and one for the Eagles uh, before this one finishes up. Um, but being able to say you beat that crosstown rival with an 8-1-1 one one record so handily, so decisively, that's something that you can really, really hang your hat on moving forward um, into the state tournament. You yeah, see, and, and little little cross up right there. Well, the sweeper for the 
Uh, Eagles is uh, number 15, Karen Mays, and uh, she does a good job of protecting the, the end uh, before the Rats can gain possession and uh, amount any type of attack. And you're not going to be too mad at somebody for being that aggressive, especially that far out. Uh, rats aren't going to do a whole lot of damage with a sort of a direct kick, but uh, treated almost in a corner kick style, trying to pop, uh, bop in that one in there. Yeah. Now we are seeing the Rats' uh, Reds defense even pushing up, trying to shorten that field a little bit more. Here will be the downside of that, though, if they do find that streaking player up the left-hand side. And just a little bit more action, it seems like, out of the Rats here in mm -hmm. this final 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, they've come alive, but maybe a little bit too late. Well, I think they're definitely trying to push things up and trying to get all 10 involved. Uh, like I said, that's high risk, high reward. You know, they say that's a, a, a poor man's blanket. You know, if you pull up to your head, your feet are exposed. You pull your feet down, then your head's exposed. This part of the match, though, <laughs> you're willing to get something cold yep. if you can get something hot. Yep, that's, that's true. Totally true. And yeah, the, and even the, the rat defenders and those, those back midfielders not even interested. Of coming up and enjoying in this game. Mm -hmm. Yep. You see a lot of players not in that screen. There you are seeing a nice, really nice job of them finding some open spaces there. But again, more dump and chase there into the middle. You see, there it is. Nice opportunity oh, from the outside the there by Jaden Smith. I think that was the, the, the big thing that the Rats were really trying to do when they set up that middle, was trying to find Smith or one of those other outside wing attackers to get a pass like uh, get a shot like that off. And Sackman's only 5'2". She used every inch sure. of that 5'2 to go up and grab <laughs> that one. And that's something probably, I'm guessing Coach Hudson uh, probably reminded his players at halftime, is that the netminder isn't all that large. So let's get the balls off the ground and put some air under it. Yeah, instead of, instead of trying to put a big boot into it or try to work around things uh, a lot, try to just try to pop one up. We might see one last save there by Erica Jackson as things continue to wind down. 13 seconds left to go here in this matchup. You see the replay on that. Nice opportunity. One final solid opportunity by the Eagles. And with five seconds left to go. And there we go. We've got the final whistle from our officials on the field. And final score, Skyline Eagles 3 here on River Rats nil but stick around uh we've got an interview down on the field with uh, kevin grabbing our player of the game so everybody stick around for that and we'll be back in just a moment And welcome back to the CTN Sports Game of the Week. Uh, who else could we pick other than this young lady, Gabby Catola? Congratulations, you're our player of the game. I was just mentioning to you, you came into this match with only one goal, and you come away with three on the season. Can you tell us about how it is, what you're going through on your attacks going in on both goals? Um, it's just my team. I make the runs, they find me. Well, your team did a great job of executing your game plan tonight. Did uh, Coach Morgan have you guys do anything different, you think? No, I don't think we did anything different. Um, we came off of a loss, but we a really good win last week, and I think that has us feeling really good. And so I think our confidence is uh, up a lot. Well, not only the confidence winning against a Crosstown rival, congratulations again on being our player of the game, Gabby. Thank you. And I'll send it back up to you, Nick, to close out our broadcast. Thanks a lot, Kevin. As usual, we need to thank everybody that makes this incredible broadcast possible. We've got Jamie Chewy, Taylor Johnson, and Katsumi Tim Nagai on camera. Jill Andrews on audio and replay. Director is Rob Cross. 
For Kevin Bryant, I'm Nick Wisniewski, thanking all of you for tuning in. Once again, from Ann Arbor Skyline High School, it's three for the Eagles, nil for the Riverettes. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you all next time on Game of the Week. <laughs>